it is 12.01. So I am going to start our presentation for today. Um, today we're going to talk about um, adaptive eating devices, eating and drinking devices. Um, my name is Courtney Ness Fuchs. I am an assistive technology training specialist with North Dakota Assistive, which is the Assistive Technology Act program for the state of North Dakota. Um, and I will have Jameis introduce himself. He is our co host. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jameis Werenberg, and I am an assistive technology specialist with the Minnesota STAR program, which is Minnesota's assistive technology program housed in the Department of Administration. I lost my video of you because that's what I do. Yeah. Okay, so um, the slides for this presentation will be uh, mailed out to you uh, uh, this afternoon. So I apologize for not having those uh, quite yet, but I was finding different things to add and um, but we will get those out to you. They will be clickable links um, and we'll also have uh, an accessible PDF version available. This presentation is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube. Uh, we will make sure to send you out a, a link to that recording when it is up and available. So uh, you haven't missed too many things, okay? So um, just want to talk about who might benefit from adaptive devices for eating and drinking. Uh, there's, there's so many different types of needs that uh, can benefit from these types of devices. So uh, folks with limited grip strength or no grip, um, arthritis is a big, uh, big, big one. Um, if someone gets pain um, from caused by gripping, that can also cause a uh, need for these adaptive devices. If someone has limited or no muscle control, for example, if they have um, a spasticity or tremors or ataxic movements, um, they could benefit. Uh, someone who has dysphagia or difficulty with swallowing can benefit upper limb differences. So if uh, somebody is born with one arm or only has the use of one hand, um, they might benefit. Someone with upper arm um, disabilities, maybe limited or no muscle tone or control, uh, limited strength, um, or if they're recovering from say carpal tunnel surgery or shoulder surgery, or they could be like my grandfather um, who's had his shoulders replaced twice now and can't lift his arms up um, far enough. I know that might be somebody who could benefit. Um, and then folks with dementia um, or visual impairments and also individuals with sensory issues. Okay, and today we're gonna talk about some uh, different adaptive devices, assistive technology, uh, to meet those needs. So utensils, um, ways to modify existing utensils, and then also utensils that are commercially available. Um, some different stabilizing types of devices, uh, plates and bowls, adapted plates and bowls, um, feeding devices, robotic feeders, um, and also some adapted cups. Hi, Stacy. Um, Stacy put a question in the Q&A. She asked where the handouts are located. Um, so I apologize, Stacy. I didn't have the handouts quite ready, but I will get them to everyone this afternoon um, and they will be available online later as well, okay? Okay, so um, first off, I wanna talk about some generalized items that can help so many different types of needs. Um, and those are things like uh, bibs to protect one's clothing. Um, there are some really fun bibs out there now, um, or clothing protectors, or, as they are sometimes called. Um, 
you can check out um, non-slip mats. Um, so you can use shelf liner um, to stabilize a plate so it's not moving away. Um, you can use like a jar opener, um, one of those grippy ones that you often get for free. Just put it down underneath your plate. So that might be something you already have at home that's cheap. Um, or uh, you can go with a, 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 a higher quality option such as Dysum, which is a non-slip material that is my favorite piece of assistive technology. If you were on our webinar a couple weeks ago about for the first part of this series, uh, you heard me wax poetic about my love for Dysum. Um, but it is a non-slip material. Uh, it's available in rolls or like placemats. Um, and it really keeps things in place so they don't move around on you. Um, plate guards are a great option for lots of different needs. Um, on the slide, the bottom right picture is of a plate guard that has been attached to a round plate. Um, it provides an edge that you can uh, push your food against. And so it, instead of uh, scooting your food off the plate, um, you push it and you can uh, push it against the plate guard and then your food's there for you. So that can help a lot of different folks. The nice thing about plate guards is that they um, uh, they can be added to plates when you're out and about. Um, they're small, you can use them with your existing plates at home. So I, I like that about plate guards um, and they're very inexpensive. Usually you can get a, a nice plate guard for 10 to $15. Um, alternatively to that, you can consider a plate or a bowl um, that has a, an edge to it or a scoop. Um, so there are, if you look for lipped plates or scoop plates online, um, you'll find bowls and plates that have an edge where it's, it's almost like part of a bowl, almost, um, that you can push your food against. So the bottom left picture on the screen is of a oval scooper dish um, is what it's called. Uh, but it is an oval dish uh, that has higher sides and then one side is uh, raised even more to create a little um, cavity that you can push against and um, put food on your fork or spoon. So scooper dishes, those are available um, from many, many different vendors. And there are ones that are weighted um, as well. Um, they usually have a non-slip bottom. If that non-slip bottom isn't enough, um, you know, maybe you want to consider using a weighted option or add a non-slip material underneath, such as Dyson or that shelf liner. Um, divided plates are also very helpful for a lot of folks. Um, it could be somebody with a, a sensory issues while eating that doesn't like their food to touch, um, but it can also be helpful for folks that have trouble with the fine motor skill of getting the food onto the plate. They can use it much like a scooper plate to push against and get their food on without mixing everything together. Um, and then weighted bowls and plates are available um, that are quite heavy and meant to help if someone has tremors or spastic movements. Um, so you aren't as likely to knock over your dish of food. Okay. The next section we're gonna talk about is uh, items to help those who have limited or no grip strength or who have pain from grasping. Uh, the biggest kind of disability in this category is those with arthritis um, or a lot of age-related disabilities. Could also be somebody who has carpal tunnel. So um, those are some considerations. We want to look um, at ways we can make utensils easier to hold. Um, so on this slide, I have some different add-ons that can be 
put on your existing utensils to make them easier to hold on to. Um, so on the top left, we have the easy hold silicone cuffs. Um, so these are silicone devices that have two openings and you place it around your spoon or fork um, on the handle and then you slide your hand in and it holds, um, holds that spoon or handle against the back of your hand for you. What's really nice about these, they have so many different uses. So you could use it for your toothbrush or your hairbrush, your razor, a uh, pencil, writing utensil. And then they can be put in the dishwasher. Um, so I like that a lot. I know they're a favorite of Jameis's as well. So yes, are... I've I've actually used it for uh, a crochet needle for somebody to crochet. So um, they're very um, durable. They're very grippy. I like that you can dishwasher, uh, put it in the dishwasher and use sanitation on it and it doesn't break down. So they're very helpful. Yeah. And they're pretty inexpensive and they usually come in like multi-size packs. I want to say they're around $20 for the a pack of like four or five different sizes. Yeah. Um, another inexpensive option that you can get to add on to existing utensils is foam grip tubing. Um, so this is the middle picture on the top. Um, and these are like tiny little pool noodles, essentially, um, that have different uh, diameter openings for different types of things you might need to add a larger grip to. Um, so in our case, we were thinking about silverware and cutlery, um, and you just slide the handle into that foam tubing, and now you've got a cushion grip that is larger. Um, they, again, like the easy hold um, can be used for many different types of uh, devices that you might need to build up a handle on. Um, so other examples they have on the a picture are of a marker and a razor. And then the item on the right uh, side of this slide is the new Mov grip aid. Um, and this is an egg shaped gripper that goes around the handle of something. Again, it can be used on writing utensils, razors, um, you know, all those daily living items we use. Um, and here we have it pictured on a fork. And so this is egg shaped. It feels pretty nice in the hand. I really like this one. Um, and it just opens up, slides around um, the handle of your item and gives you a cushioned grip. Um, and it does have texture too to help you keep it in place. Um, and these are available um, from different retailers. So I think I saw even like CVS had them. So that is the new Mov Grip Aid. And then lastly, um, you can consider an industrial twist tie. Um, I did not know these were a thing uh, until a couple years ago, but they're like a giant twist tie that has foam on the outside of it. Um, and you can bend them into the shape that you need. So you could create your own handle, um, custom handle attachment uh, to hold your utensil in place. Um, these are available at places like Menards and Fleet Farm uh, online as well. Okay, so some more add-ons to help for those with limited or no grip strength are uh, these commercially available options that are made um, for occupational therapists um, that you slide your utensil into and then they uh, grip around the back of the hand. Um, so you hold your utensil and then the in the grip aid and then it has a Velcro strap or a stretchy band that goes around the back of your hand and holds it in place. So the left picture on the screen is the easy hold utensil holder. This one has a little bit of weight to it. Um, it's got a hook and loop system that you can uh, use. You can um, secure using one hand or maybe the mouth. 
to secure it and put it on. And then it holds a standard flatware piece in it. So you just slide it in. You don't have to have any grip strength because this device will hold it for you. So you slide the flatware in and it'll hold it. And then you can scoop um, using your arm motion. You don't have to hold onto it with your hand at all. Um, next to it is a universal strap holder. So this is basically the same type of thing. It's except it's a cushion grip. So the easy on utensil holder is hard in the hand. Um, if you need a cushioned grip, you can consider the universal strap holder. Um, and so it's a cushion that goes in the hand like you're grasping it. And again, your cutlery just slides into it, your existing cutlery. Um, and then there's a strap around the back of your hand um, that holds it in place for you. And then lastly, um, on the far right side of the screen is called the goodie strap. Now this is an add-on that you put on your existing utensils. Um, and it also works with big grip utensils. So those with, that have large built up handles. And this one is elastic. It just goes around the handle um, on the top and the bottom of the handle. And then the elastic holds the handle um, in place on your hand and you don't need to have any grip strength for that. And then there's a couple more DIY options that can help make existing utensils easier to hold. Um, that Dyson non-slip material, they sell it in these uh, long adhesive strips that you can wrap around the utensils you use every day. Um, so there's a picture of a fork and someone is wrapping that non-slip uh, adhesive Dyson around it. And then another option is called Instamorph. Instamorph is a moldable plastic um, that you can use to create custom built handles, say that fit your hand exactly. Um, so the right side of the screen, we have a picture of a spoon that someone has created a custom built up handle that perfectly fits in their hand um, using Instamorph. And um, we want to give credit to the assistive technology program in Rhode Island. Uh, they made a tutorial about how to make your own built up utensil um, using Instamorph. So there is a link to that article that'll be in the slides when you receive them. Courtney, I just want to add to that with the Instamorph, um, I don't think one, one of the questions we had last session was is if this is dishwasher safe. And I haven't been able to find anything uh, that is dishwasher safe. So I just want to make sure that we know that uh, if you're going to use this to, to hand wash this. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Um, yep. That is a very good point. Um, Instamorph, to mold it, you have to put it in hot water. And so if we put it in the dishwasher, the mold is going to go away. Um, so that's a really good point. Thank you. I do want to add while I was researching um, that there are some very uh, creative individuals in the 3D printing community that have made designs for uh, adapted cutlery or add-ons to cutlery to make them easier to hold. Um, so that is really cool. And if you have access to a 3D printer, there might be a design out there. Or if you um, know somebody who likes to do that designing, um, that might be a good option as well. Sorry, I jumped there. I'm in garden level of my home and uh, there's a yard bag that flew across because it's pretty windy here today. <laughs> it scared me. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, um, the next slide we are on is about utensils that you can purchase that already have built up or ergonomic grips. These can be easier to hold on to, um, especially if you get some pain while holding on to a thin handle. Um, so the left side of this screen is a picture of uh, SP or Sam's Preston, I think, Appleware built up handles. So there's a spoon and a fork with these large um, grips that are built up 
and um, they have a lot of texture. So that can be easier to hold on to, um, especially if you have, you're eating something that is wet um, and it slides down and then it won't be so slippery. The middle picture is of, uh, oh, I forgot to put a label on that one. Uh, it's of a, the power of red fork. Um, so this is a fork with a large built up handle. Um, it's slightly cushioned and it's got a lot of grip and that built up handle is red. Um, and we will get to the, the thought process behind red utensils and plates later on in the presentation. And then on the right side of the screen is a set of cutlery called integral cutlery. Say that five times fast. Um, and so those are ergonomically designed um, utensils. They have um, a, a curved handle that actually has like a ball on the end of it. They're made to be easier to hold on the hand. So that the ball is kind of like a almost like an egg-shaped ball. And then there's a little weight in it um, to help stabilize. Um, they have a flat bottom of the ball so that they don't roll around on you. Um, and then uh, I've read some reviews that they're really good for some uh, folks with those ergonomic needs. Um, so integral cutlery. Okay, and then some more options for adapted utensils for limited or no grip strength um, are these utensils that have loops on them or handles um, like clips that go around the hand or the fingers. So uh, on the left side of the screen are these finger loop utensils. So it's a utensil that has loops on both sides of the handle that you can slide your say thumb and forefinger into to help give you a little more stability. Um, and then next to that is a vertical handle, uh, hand clip fork. Um, so this is a fork and then perpendicular to the handle is a, uh, another handle <laughs> um, that goes around your palm palm of your hand. So you don't need to have any uh, use of your fingers. You just need to be able to use your palm uh, for those. And then next to that is the hand clip spoon. Uh, so this is similar to the vertical handle hand clip fork. Um, but this one, instead of being perpendicular um, to the handle, the, the handle is flat and then it's just like a standard handle of a spoon, but there's a clip that goes around the top of the hand. So it go over the back of the hand and you just slide your hand into it. Courtney, this is where your 3D printing would come into play. I know there are some designs out there that would mimic this kind of same shape uh, and then allow you to put in a, a utensil, so. Yes, yeah. Yes, the 3D printing world is, is really exciting. And it, if you have access to it, one, uh, the materials you know, are, can be very inexpensive. Um, so you can make you know, a whole set of these utensils for maybe the same cost as purchasing one commercially, so. I would just caution that uh, anything that you put into your mouth uh, should not be 3D printed though, because the bacteria can get in those ridges and yeah. cause illness. So, um, but for handles and, and such to build up the utensils, that would be an awesome idea. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good point, James. Okay. And then the last picture on the screen is of hole in one cutlery, uh, which is kind of funny. It is um, a Spoon and a fork, they have a knife too, I think. And the handle is actually where you can put all four of your fingers inside of it, three or four of your fingers on what's comfortable. Um, and then the spoon, the, the head of the spoon or the head of the fork is attached to that. And these you can um, adjust for right or left-handed use. 
Um, and I believe you can turn the head of the spoon or fork to meet the angle that you need. So those are called hole in one cutlery. Okay, the next slide I'm on is about some different knives that can help individuals with reduced strength in their hands, maybe the use of one hand, dexterity needs. Um, those are some different types. Um, sharp, I did, said this in the last webinar, but sharp knives cut better. They're easier and use less force. So if you're able to safely use a sharp knife, it will, it will make for an easier time cutting. All right, so um, we have a rocker knife, which you hold in your hand. Um, it goes in between two of your fingers. So you're typically it goes between your first and, or your pointer and your middle finger, but you could put it in between your middle and your ring finger, and then you hold on to it and the blade comes down, it's curved. Um, and you just rock back and forth, you push down with your palm and it uses kind of your own weight to provide uh, the cutting force. Um, similar to that on the far right side of the screen is a vertical grip rocker knife. Um, so these are, are pretty well reviewed by some one-handed users. Um, the knife has a rocking blade and then the handle comes up straight up from that blade and you can use your hand and just kind of rock back and forth using a grass grip to cut your meat or whatever it is. Um, and then we have an L-shaped knife um, with a big grip and those can be nice um, for folks who have difficulty holding on to a standard handle. This comes up and is in more of an ergonomic position, upright grasp. So you don't have to rotate the wrist at all. And then there are kind of the, the traditional rocker knives um, that you see that have a curved blade instead of a flat blade. So these have a curved blade. Courtney, I just wanna let you know that you're at 30 minutes. Thank you, James. Okay, I'll talk a little quicker here. Um, so the next slide I have is about lightweight utensils. Um, and these can be good for those um, who get pain when grasping, needing to grasp too hard, um, or they have weakness in the hands or arms. Um, so I have a couple different options on the screen. The one on the left is called Homecraft, uh, that's the brand, lightweight foam handled cutlery. So these are molded, um, they call them, excuse me, I'm gonna read what it's down, sculptured closed cell foam with finger contours. Um, to give comfort. So it's a built up handle, but it's made of foam. So it's very lightweight. And then on the right side of the screen is a line of utensils called the feather like utensils. So these are very lightweight. They have larger handles, but they're lightweight. Um, and this line, they have their utensils available in kind of the standard formation for cutlery with this handle. Um, and then they also have ergonomic um, handles. So for example, they have a line that has L-shaped handles. So much like our L-shaped uh, rocker knife on the previous, or L-shaped knife on the previous slide, um, these are in that L-shape. You can hold your hand upright. You don't have to rotate the wrist at all. Um, so those can be a nice option. Okay, um, and then just thinking about cups, spill-proof cups, there's lots of options on the market. Um, the Kennedy cup has been around for quite a while, um, and it is a cup that was designed, it's got a handle, and then it's got a lid that you put a straw in, um, and they're meant to be spill-proof, and they're um, pretty lightweight. Another option is, um, these Munchkin Miracle 360 cups, they sell them at Target, Walmart, Amazon. 
Um, these cups uh, have a unique lid where you need to press down um, with either your lips or your teeth to allow liquid to come out. Um, I have a toddler and I can attest that these are actually spill proof and I have tested a lot of different cups with her so I really like that. <laughs> There's only so many times you need milk spilt all over your house before you find a good cup. Okay uh, now we're going to go into a section that talks about options for individuals who have limited or, or no muscle control. Um, and maybe they have tremors or spastic movements um, or apraxic movements. So we can think about adding weight um, to the person, their hand or their forearm might help. Um, so there's a few options out there for this. Um, you can think of the handy things weight, which is kind of like a glove without fingers. It, it um, rests on the back of the hand and provides some extra weight. It's held in place by a Velcro that goes around the front of the hand. And then there are loops that the fingers go into. So that provides extra weight on the hand. Um, you don't have to switch between say a weighted fork and a weighted cup. Um, you can just use um, maybe your standard uh, fork and cup with an, the addition of this handy weight. Um, and it can be used for other types of activities such as writing or um, daily cares. You could consider a forearm sleeve um, that has weight added to it. Um, so the middle picture is of a weighted forearm sleeve that also has compression, um, but it goes from the wrist to the elbow and just provides extra weight, which can be stabilizing. And then the right side is like a wrist, or a wrist, a wrist um, brace almost. Uh, that's, that's what it looks like, a wrist brace, but this one has a weight and it doesn't go up all that high. It goes just maybe uh, three inches or so above where the hand, the back of the hand bends um, to meet the wrist. Um, so those are a few different options for adding weight to the body to help. Um, of course, there are weighted utensils. I think this is really uh, uh, probably the most well-known um, assistive technology or adaptive devices for eating. Um, so there's the Good Grips line by OXO, where they have these large built up silicone handles that have some grip on them. Um, and they, this OXO, they offer these in a weighted or non-weighted um, version. And they also sell uh, bend to angle versions. So you can bend the head of the spoon or the fork to meet the angle that you need. Um, Another well-known brand is the Keatlery. Um, it's like K-Eatlery. I think it's called Keatlery. Um, weighted utensils. So these are more like your traditional um, looking flatware, um, but they have these larger handles, built up handles that are weighted, but they are all silver and they blend in a little bit more um, if that is something that you concerned you. Um, there, I will say there are many brands of weighted utensils. Those are just a couple that are pretty well known. Okay, uh, next spoons. Um, so if you have any difficulty controlling your movements, uh, eating uh, anything that is like liquid, like soup or cereal can be very frustrating. Um, the picture on the left side of the screen is of the sup spoon. Now the sup spoon um, was developed by a gentleman in, I think it's England, um, who had a cerebral palsy and he wanted to be able to eat soup and he couldn't find a soup spoon that would allow him to do that. So he developed his own and it's called the sup spoon. Um, so this is a spoon that actually has kind of a well inside and that um, allows more of the liquid to come up. 
Um, so you, you don't need to keep the spoon as flat um, and still be able to get a nice size bite. Um, you could consider a covered spoon. Um, so the bottom right picture is of a woman and she is, she has a spoon that has a covering uh, or a top and it, the top of the spoon, like a lid is about two thirds of the way over. So it provides a very similar experience to the sup spoon where it's got that well you can scoop your liquids into. And then lastly, on the top right, we have an angled spoon that has a built up handle. So this spoon again has a deeper spoon well or spoon bowl, I think they call it, um, to allow for more liquid to stay in there. Um, and it's got a built up handle and the spoon shape is a little bit different. It's almost like a scoop, I would say. Like if you're gonna scoop out um, flour, for example. Right. Next slide we have is about utensils that are for stabilizing. I want to say that there are a couple more options on the market than these uh, three that I have here. Um, there are, one is called the liftware stabilizing um, spoon. They have a couple different lines. I didn't include them on the slides because they haven't been available to purchase for a couple of years um, during the pandemic. There must have been a production holdup. Um, if they ever do come available, watch for our social media pages. I'm sure we will post that the Liftware uh, series is out again. Um, and then there's also a, a alternative called the Galleno. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but it is supposed to be a spoon that has a stabilizing mechanism built into the handle. So the three that I have pictured, um, I'll start with the kind of the least techie of them. And that is on the bottom. These are plastic handle swivel spoons. Um, so it's a larger handle. And then the head of the spoon or fork can actually swivel a little bit. Um, to help uh, the food stay in place um, and also allow you to get to the angle that you need to uh, get the food to your mouth. Um, they have stoppers on both sides um, so that the, they won't spin all the way around. So it'll only let it go so far, the swivel. On the top of the screen is the steady spoon. Um, and so this has a little bit of a weight on the back end of it. It's a large built up handle and then there's a strap over the handle to keep it on your hand. And then the third option is called the Ellie spoon, no spill spoon. And Jameis is actually going to talk about his experience with that. So this one is, is um, I wouldn't say is no spill. It, it can spill with certain foods. Um, what it works really well with is like dense kind of wetter foods like uh, mashed potatoes would be a good example. Um, it just needs a little bit of that weight to counter counterbalance it and make it more steady. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for soups. Um, I would recommend more of the sup spoon that we talked about earlier, where it has a little bit of that well and bowl to it. Um, but this is a great all purpose um, uh, utensil to you know eat the majority of, of lava foods great yeah so this um the ellie spoon it is supposed to level out the spoon bowl so it's um the the handle and the head of the spoon are supposed to you're supposed to be able to bring the, the spoon or the utensil up to your mouth um even if you can't say lift your forearm all the way up or your your shoulder all the way up to get that that spoon up without spilling it so they're two separate pieces that uh, the angle will adjust okay and now we have the neater eater and this is actually a whole line 
um, a company that has a whole line of uh, stabilizing devices to help folks uh, that have um, muscle spasms or difficulty getting food up to their, their mouths to eat. Um, so I don't think I have time to show the video, um, but I will make sure to send out the video in the comments and have a link to it in the slides. Um, but they have a few different products. The one I have pictured on the screen is from their website. It's a young woman who uses a power wheelchair and it has supports for her arms that help to stabilize them. Um, and they are separate from the armrests of her wheelchair. Um, they actually have a series of uh, levers on the back that help to provide some stabilization to her arms while eating or drinking. And then the next option I want to talk about is called the OB. Um, so this is a robotic feeding device um, that you activate using a switch, an ability switch. So any kind of switch, it could be a traditional kind of like jelly bean or specs switch, um, or it could be a head array. Um, it could be a grasp switch, you know, whatever type of switch uh, the person is using. Um, and there's a short video. Um, and this is actually a video we shot in our office a couple of years ago, um, demonstrating how um, this device works. So he, the young man pressed the switch um, with his finger and there's an arm that- This device is dishwasher and microwaves. That scoops down into one of the four compartments and scoops up the, the thing that he's eating, okay? And it, there's four compartments. He can hit, it, he, he's a two switch user, so he can hit the other switch. It'll change which compartment. And um, it's just a really cool device. Courtney, we have um, two of these available for lending, which we're going to talk about at the end more towards about our lending libraries. But we do have two of these available um, for people to try out or demo if they need a demo for um, us to demo that for them. Um, they are quite expensive. So that's kind of what the beauty of our lending libraries are great for is to be able to try devices like this out to see if they work. Um, for instance, this device costs I think between six and seven thousand um, dollars. So that's a big investment, uh, and something you definitely want to try out before you buy it, kind of a thing. Yeah, that's a great example of why our lending libraries are are there, so folks can try things, see if they actually work for their needs. Okay, um, and then some things to help with upper um, extremity differences or disabilities, um, such as. The, if someone has only the use of one hand, um, they have generalized weakness or a limited arm or wrist movement. Um, so this picture is of the NORC, K-N-O-R-K. So instead of the spork, which is a spoon and a fork combined, this is a fork and a knife combined. Um, so this was, had rave reviews from um, a blog that I was reading from a, a person that has the use of one hand. Um, the, the NORC is a fork and then on one uh, side of the, of the one edge of the fork, the tines of the fork is a knife. So you, she was saying how she doesn't have to pick up a fork, she doesn't have, and then pick up a knife um, and she can't, uh, she doesn't have um, one hand, so she wouldn't be able to uh, hold a, knife, a fork in place to keep the food there and then cut with a knife with the other hand. This allows her to do that um, using only one hand, so a nork. And there's a picture of someone using the nork to cut pizza. Okay, 
Um, and then other utensils that can help somebody that can't uh, say move their wrist or their arm very well are um, these angled utensils. So there's several different types of angled utensils. You can get utensils that have these big grips, such as the OXO line, um, that also have uh, bend to angle heads. So you can bend it to the specific angle that works for you. Um, I have on the middle of the screen, a picture of the power of red bendable spoon. Um, so this is a big built up handle uh, that is red. And then it has a spoon that has been bent to um, a 45 degree angle um, from the head of, uh, or from the handle, because that's what that user needs. Um, on the left side of the screen is another set of red utensils. And these have, um, their angle is a little bit different. So the utensils are not straight. Um, and they actually have like a kind of an egg shaped base that you hold in the hand and they have a slight curve to them. Um, so the, the head of the spoon is, is slightly curved. So those are Evo um, OT wear easy grip utensils. And then on the far right side of the screen um, is a picture of easy eaters, a spoon and fork. Um, so these, this set is a spoon and a fork that are at an angle. They have a larger handle and then they ha also have a guard um, to keep the spoon or the fork from going too far into the user's mouth. Okay, next up, um, we're going to talk about a couple things to consider when working with someone who has dementia or a visual impairment when eating. Um, there are some similarities, so I combine them. Um, and a big thing is to consider contrast. Um, so if you are someone that has um, limited or very low vision, um, seeing mashed potatoes on a cream colored plate, uh, you know, there's, there's really no contrast there. But if you had mashed potatoes on a navy blue plate, there would be a lot more contrast between the food you're eating and then the color of the plate. They've, uh, there have also been studies that have shown that this is effective for individuals that have dementia, um, making sure that there's good contrast between the food and the plate. Um, same thought goes for uh, liquids. So uh, for both folks that have dementia and folks that have um, low vision, say if you are pouring coffee, black coffee into a black coffee cup, it's, you know, it's hard to see for a person that has low vision. It's hard to see how far up they filled the cup. Um, and then for a person with dementia, it just kind of blends right in and it doesn't look like there's any liquid in that cup. So consider the contrast. Um, red um, has been shown as a color to uh, stimulate appetite, which is why so many uh, food uh, brands have red in their logos. Um, you know, think about McDonald's red, 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 KFC, red. So many different food brands use red because red is thought to stimulate appetite. Um, this is, red is especially useful for folks that have dementia because it can help stimulate that appetite and it provides really good contrast for most foods. Um, so red might be an option. So I have a red plate that is partitioned um, as a picture on the screen. Um, those utensils we talked about earlier, the power of red. So those are red handled utensils and they're red handled because they are hoping to stimulate the appetite of the person. Okay, um, lastly, let's talk about sensory um, issues for eating and what a couple adaptations can be. Um, so this is for somebody who might get overstimulated while eating or understimulated. I want to say that 
Um, I am not a feeding professional, so I am not an occupational therapist. Um, if, if your person you're working with has sensory issues related to food, an occupational therapist is who you need to be working with to make sure you're meeting those needs. Okay. Um, and speech language pathologists also work with um, eating and swallowing. So make sure you're consulting with your healthcare provider to find the right option for you. And that really goes for any types of adapted utensils as well. Okay, so for sensory issues, um, I just want to give a quick little quip about spoon size. So when my husband and I first started living together, we were in this tiny little apartment that um, had really narrow silverware drawers. And I had a utensil organizer. And I had the small spoons in the back. So in the front of the organizer, you could see the knives, the small forks, the big forks, and the big spoons. And then the back drawer of the organizer uh, or compartment, which was in the very back of the drawer, had the small spoons. And uh, after about a year of living together, he went and opened the drawer and was having a conniption because we didn't have any small spoons. And my husband and myself both have ADHD, have big issues with too big of utensils. Like we are solid teaspoon and salad fork users all the time. Um, and he was having a conniption because he thought we only had big spoons, <laughs> but he never pulled the drawer out all the way. <laughs> and the, the little spoons were in the back of the drawer. Anywho, um, I know in some neurodivergent communities, you'll hear people talk about how the, the big spoon or the big fork is, is it's not a good feeling. So anyway. Okay, uh, so next slide um, is a little device called the right bite. Um, and you, it's a silicone holder um, that you put your food into, and then it only shows an appropriate sized bite of that item, such as a cookie, which is displayed here. Um, and this is meant for folks that maybe don't um, have correct perception of how large a bite it is. And so if they see like a whole sandwich, it might be overwhelming and they maybe have fear about eating that item. Um, or if it's somebody that takes too big of bites and then that causes choking hazards. Um, so this is called the right bite. And it's um, primarily used by caregivers um, that help feed someone else. Um, so the right bite. Pardon, you got about five minutes left. Awesome, thank you. And then the next slide I have is about utensils that have some different textures. Um, so going back to the spoon anecdote um, about my husband, I totally understood where he was coming from because I do not use the big spoons. Um, there are plastisol or like this plastic kind of rubbery um, material coated utensils. Um, so on the right side of the screen is like seven different shapes of spoons that have uh, this coating over the head of the spoon. Um, and so instead of having that like teeth on metal, and if that makes sense, shivers down your spine, it does with mine too, um, texture, um, these might be an option that can help. Um, this, these uh, coated utensils, um, so there's plastisol, which is a material. Um, there's also rubber utensils. Um, can also help folks that um, 
uh, have some spasticity or uncontrolled movements. And so they don't clamp down too hard on um, their utensil. And then on the left side of the screen um, are silicone spoons that have um, double edges. And these are called the duo spoon. These are made um, to uh, help teach feeding to children with feeding difficulties and like oral motor issues. Um, so it's a spoon that actually has two um, different textures on one on either side of, of the, uh, so it's got two heads of the spoon and each head has a different texture. And they, um, occupational therapists use them to help children that maybe have some understimulation in their mouth while eating food. Um, thought that was interesting. Once again, please work um, with the appropriate health professional. And um, lastly, I just wanted to remind everybody um, that your Assistive Technology Act program, so North Dakota Assistive in North Dakota um, and Minnesota Star in Minnesota, um, and then every state has an ATAC program. So if you need to resources on how to find yours, let us know. Um, every state offers short-term loans of devices. So you can try them out before you buy them. Um, every state offers demonstrations of devices. Um, so I know in our demonstration center at North Dakota Assistive, we have one in Fargo and one in Bismarck. We have a ton of different adaptive eating devices out there. And sometimes it's really nice to be able to come in and hold all these different types of utensils in your hand, for example, and see them. And Minnesota has the OB robotic feeder, which is great. Um, you can schedule a demonstration with them um, and even a loan, as Jameis was saying. And both of our states offer free short-term loans. Our demonstrations are free as well. Also, Courtney, it's important to note that we are partners. Um, so yes. it's kind of rare for uh, AT programs to partner together, but we get to partner together, which is amazing, uh, yes. to help out our residents in North uh, West Minnesota, uh, closer to Fargo. Um, and so, um, if we don't have it, um, we can check with North Dakota's uh, loan library and see if they do and uh, hopefully get you hooked up with something. Mm -hmm. And if you're, say, in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, you're a lot closer to Fargo than you are to um, Minneapolis area, uh, you can come into Fargo to get a demonstration if you were looking for a hands-on demonstration. So, yeah, it's a wonderful part. Okay, um, so just remember, please contact us, your Assistive Technology Act programs. We're here to serve you. Um, we don't have any financial uh, you know, benefit from you purchasing specific products. We just wanna help you find the right item to fit your needs. So in North Dakota, it's North Dakota Assistive. ndassistive.org um, is our web address. And then in Minnesota, um, it, their web address is mn.gov forward slash admin forward slash star. Or you can search for Minnesota Star Program. So. Yep. And then also our lending library is mn.atforall.com if you want to check out what we have in our inventory. Yeah. And North Dakota, it's the same web address except nd.at, the number four, all.com. Same type of thing. So I think it's also really important to know that you can call us or email us um, as well. And we love to uh, collaborate with you and brainstorm different solutions. Um, so if you're not quite sure what you want, um, give us a call. We're here for uh, information and assistance as well. Yeah, exactly. Or if you're not sure, like what he, James was saying, what you want, or if you're not sure if there's anything out there that can help, give us a call. That's our job. That's what we're here to do. So, all right. Thank you everyone for joining us today.
Um, I'm going to stop sharing the slides, but I will hang out for just a minute here in case anybody has any questions. Mm -hmm.